Hello and welcome to the NMR video for uh, apple oil. Um, in experiment five, uh, if you're in room 275, you're going to be reacting acetic acid with N hexyl alcohol, doing a Fischer esterification reaction and making N hexyl alcohol, also known as apple oil. It's an artificial apple fragrance. And what we want to do is figure out um, which signals on the spectrum match which protons on the molecule. I'm not going to fill out the entire table for you. So this is the table that I'm referring to. You can find this table um, underneath uh, the Experiment 5 PDF on the class website. Um, what I want to do is to highlight some differences in the spectra just to make sure you can do the interpretation um, and then come to us for additional help. Um, so you'll notice that the integration is provided because it's a little bit wonky, so I wanted to explain that a little bit. Um, I wanted to show you that the splitting patterns are actually given and the symbology as well. So, so really with this video about it's not for me to do the assignments for you really at all because it's very similar to what we did for banana oil. Um, it's just to show you some differences in the spectrum. So here we go. What we have going on um, are some symbols. I just want to make sure this is clear. So this over here is signal A in case this was lost and it's given there's a T right there that this is a triplet and the chemical shift value was given of 3.96. The other thing that's given um, is this little integration value down below. Now in the previous video, uh, we talked about um, how the spectrum of banana oil had integration lines. They were little curves. And actually you do see these curves up above. It's these guys, the relative heights, but they don't show up for all of them. And then rather than just measuring them, um, the computer actually, the, or rather the software goes through and calculates the area under the curve. But that requires the person who uh, actually did the, um, the, the workup, who actually told the computer what to do, um, did proper integration. And I wanted to show you an example of kind of a bad integration. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is why I, I give you the number of hydrogens up here, because I know that it is a little bit wonky. So this, this is already filled out for you. So like, check, already done. Um, but I think it's important, especially for those of you that are moving on for more NMR applications to know what's going on here. So what we should be doing is looking at these individual numbers and these are going to give us uh, relative ratios, in this case pretty loose ratios of um, who goes with what. And we're going to take the smallest number, um, divide in this case by 0.76 on each, and get a relative idea of how many signals or how many protons each signal is worth. So I went ahead and divided uh, each of those integration values that are provided by 0.76, and we can see that we're starting to get uh, somewhere near um, the number of protons that we're expecting in the molecule. Uh, if we take a look at our structure, however, I'm just gonna draw on these. We have a CH3 group, we have a CH2 group, actually we have a bunch of CH2 groups. another CH3 group. So there's actually no CH groups that we're expecting. We're not expecting um, a one hydrogen signal. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply all of these by two. And we're starting to get um, a little bit closer um, to what we're expecting. So uh, we're looking for just to kind of recap. Um, there in theory should be three, oh, I'm sorry, two CH3 signals. And then I believe Four, I'm going to go back one more time. One, two, three, four CH2s. Okay. Um, and of those two methyl groups, we have one that should be a singlet. I'm going to keep going back and forth. This guy here should be a singlet. This guy over here should be a triplet. It has two neighboring protons, both of those guys on that carbon there. Uh, the splitting patterns are going to be very useful for us for determining um, who's what. Uh, I'm not going to do every single one for reasons that will be clear in a moment, but I at least wanted to highlight that the two hydrogens next to the oxygen, the ones on this carbon, um, have two neighboring protons, so this one, these guys are also going to be triplets. Now the rest of the protons, um, all those six CH2 groups, 
they're actually um, going to be pretty close in chemical shifts and they all have a lot of neighbors. So and minimum the CH2 group right here is going to be a pentet. It has four neighbors. Um, the CH2 group over here is also going to be a pentet. And then that CH2 group right there has three on one side, two on the other. That's a total mm. of five neighbors. And so this would be uh, a sextet. Okay, so those are the potential splitting patterns that we're looking for. I think what I'm going to do is what I'm going to have to scroll back and forth is just drag that compound down below. All right. Cool. So then where are we? Okay, so we have our whole spectrum there. There's our integration values. Okay, so now we're going to take that back to integration and we can use some splitting to help us sort of figure that out. Uh, now, once again, we have our splitting patterns here. Uh, we have a clear triplet assigned what we're calling signal A. That's the most de-shielded one. So this one must be over here right, the one that's closest to the oxygen. We have this S right there, that's signal B. The S stands for singlet, that's given in the table. Um, the only singlet that we expect in the molecule would be um, for signal, or the, the CH3 next to the methyl group, uh, sorry, next to the carbonyl. And then we have other clear patterns of a triplet. There's, uh, this is the most shielded triplet that's signal E, in case you can't see, there's a letter E right there. And this is going to be that terminal methyl group. So we have only two signals left, but we have um, six hydrogens, or, or sorry, two, two peaks left, but we have one, two, three sets of protons left to assign. And this here is really, really wanted to get to in this video, at least like show you that that's um that's okay like that that's not a mistake so let me clean that up real quick and just point out how the integration could be useful here we have two signals left to assign one that's assigned to two hydrogens and one that's assigned to nine and remember um the way that this was integrated was not great and so all i want you to take from this is that this signal accounts for more hydrogens and this one accounts for less hydrogens. And what it's going to be um, is an overlap of signals. So this is going to be an overlap of two different signals that show up at coincidentally the same place. And another hint for that is that we have an M here that stands for a multiplet, which means it's an overlap of two signals, whereas this guy shows up as a pentet. Now, I don't want to take all the fun away from all of you, um, so this is going to be a good opportunity um, for you to practice your calculated chemical shifts. So you're going to calculate uh, the chemical shifts for each of these protons. And now, since we've already used the A, B, C, D, whatever, um, I'm going to call these like one, two, and three. And what I'd like for you to do on your own is to calculate the chemical shifts for each one of these using the correlation tables. This is the beginning of those tables. We've already uh, assigned these protons. Um, you can just put those ranges in for the ones that are applicable. Um, but now we're going to be exploring um, three different uh, sets of protons that are within 0.8 to 1.9, meaning we're going to need to go to the actual correlation table. Since each of those are CH2 groups, you're going to be starting with uh, the methylene. So remember, a methylene is just that term for having a CH2 group. So that's going to be your base value. And each of those, I'll just draw the structure so you can see easily. You're going to be calculating this one, this one, and that one. And they are all next to the ester group. More specifically, they're on the oxygen side of an ester group. So we're going to be looking for an oxygen that's connected to a carbonyl that's connected to an R group. So we go down, uh, notice that these are carbonyls that are directly attached, not oxygens. So those aren't going to be useful to us. Instead, we're going to look, ooh, here's our oxygen range but we want to get more specific. We said it was an oxygen next to a carbonyl, but it's an oxygen next to a carbonyl with an R group. 
So these values are going to be useful to you. Um, this is what you would use if you were talking about this particular set of hydrogens, if you were to calculate that. You would use hmm, this value if you're one carbon away from that ester, and you would add this value, very small, so you can see they get smaller and smaller for this one here. Now, when you get to this one, you're going to be starting with 1.2, and all that's nearby is just an alkyl group, just an R group. So you'll find that the base value of this is just going to be straight up 1.2, whereas um, calculating the remaining ones, particularly this one here and that one, are going to be uh, significant or just a little bit bigger than this 1.2 value. Um, and that is just kind of like, you know, helping you guys uh, figure out which two might be overlapping. Um, I'm not saying that any two in particular um, that I've talked about, or sorry, some two in particular that I've talked about are uh, going to be overlapping signals, and that's actually what you're trying to find, and the best way to do that is by calculating the values. So let me scroll back to the last page to summarize. All right, so in summary, we had um, a good time making sure that you understood all the little symbols that were happening uh, within the spectrum. So it's just a new type of representation. Um, we identified the different splitting patterns and we're able to break down and identify uh, three different signals just based on the splitting patterns and a little bit on the chemical shifts. Um, we also were dealing with this problem of having uh, less signals than there should be in theory. So what we're doing is uh, we're, um, trying to figure out which two signals are overlapping. And what I'm leaving you with is, once again, to calculate the chemical shifts. And I went over how you know, we identified them as one, two, and three. Use those cor chemical correlation tables. Figure out uh, which two are closer, and that'll help you determine, um, or that's one way of determining um, which signal is D and which signal goes with C. I hope you found that useful and that you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching.